What is up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. True Hunter here. In today's video, we are on Val de Bois going over the Red Deer. Now, this is a pretty, pretty fair, or I would say a fairly easy animal to hunt as a beginner. There's really nothing special you have to do um, that you haven't done already at this point with like the elk and stuff. But they are only found on two maps, which is Hirschfeld and Val de Bois. My personal opinion, Val de Bois is the better one to do it at, and I'm going to show you why. So on this one, on this map in particular, you can either hunt with off tins like we've been doing, or you can, what I like to do is the river run, which is, you know, the most effective for your time, and I've already kind of got a diagram drawn up here. So you can either start at the North Lodge, or you can start at the South Lodge, but I like to draw like a, a dividing line just by the lodges here to give me like a zone to hunt by now the zones I got kind of mapped out with RD are red deer okay these are the prominent zones you're gonna actually find the red deer and hear the calls from as for the X's right here these I like to these are basically checkpoints I like to set for myself I hit four checkpoints or four four areas throughout my hunt now the T's I got are basically tent locations you guys can put your tents at you know they're kind of middle points in between each outpost so if you want to like you don't want to walk the whole river you can just spawn at the tent and vice versa also if you guys want to put a bear barrel down this area right here these little ponds are really good for bear barrel and so basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing the river run and we'll be hitting the checkpoints along the way and hopefully we can sneak into some nice red deer um, the weapons of choice are obviously going to be the snake bite, compound bow, and the 300 magnum here. Because it's going to be mighty plenty to take one of these guys down. And we're also in the same camo, the basic 3D camo for this map as well. This works great, just like, you know, Logger's Point or White Heart Island. So you don't need any special camo for these guys. Um, about the only thing different that I have on me is the red deer collar. You are going to want to buy one of these. Um, basically they work the same way as the elk with the audio cues. So if you call and say there's a lesser bull or stag around in the area, you're going to get a reply from him a lot sooner than you would a big, bigger bull. So. Yeah, basically what we're going to do is, like I said, we're just going to walk this trail pretty much along this trail all the way down to the river. And then we'll start our actual river run. Other than hunting for the non-typical, like, whitetail and the mule deer, I would say the red deer are probably one of my favorite animals to hunt on here. Yeah, he is stuck on the rock. So, we are probably going to end up taking him with the rifle, to be honest. Let's go ahead and drop him with 300 magnum here. And just like that, he's down. It looks like there's a wood grouse right there as well. Honestly, I forgot this map even had wood grouse on it too, cause just because of how much I hunt them on Hirschfelden. Hirschfelden is just a better map to hunt those on, in my opinion. I got a really good spot in Hirschfelden I hunt these guys on all right guys here's our first red deer of the hunt at the starting spot of the river run right here at basically at checkpoint one so let's go ahead and pick him up weigh 206.2 and he's only going to be 161 so not bad you got 41 gms from this guy definitely worth the bullet in my opinion i can almost buy me an entire quiver of arrows if i didn't have a sub subscription or anything now, you're noticing that I'm running a little bit here. Now, what I would recommend is take your marker, your little dot, and kind of dot out where you shot that animal at, or shot your gun at least, roughly. Now, when my marker, when that little red dot is almost not visible anymore, that means that I'm without, like I'm out of render distance of that gunshot. So that means animals that are going to be rendering in for me aren't going to be spooked by that gunshot now the now the way i got these checkpoints set up are kind of like bins in the river if you've not noticed like the first bin is checkpoint one the second bin is checkpoint two 
and so on. And so that's how I've kind of got this map set up for my Red Deer run. You can actually use this run, the same run I'm doing right now, for like Roe Deer, Red Fox as well. But I hunt um, Bush Rangers run for Red Fox. When I'm doing like a Red Fox competition or something. And I'll, I'll use actually, I'll actually hunt Hamildahl for uh, Roe Deer too. Although they're on multiple maps. Hirschfeld in this one and uh, Hamildahl. Also, that, I would recommend doing that as well. Just an overall useful tip for playing this game. If you have a spare tent, just keep it on your person. Just just carry it around with you because you never know, like, when you... If you're playing single player and you have a competition, you know. I always... Whatever map I'm hunting, I like to enroll in every animal possible on that map. No matter what. Because it's the times that you're not enrolled in a competition that you see some of the biggest animals for that species. And it would drive... It drives me crazy, like, when I'm not enrolled. Thinking, oh, I could have won that competition with this animal or something so i've gotten to the habit of if i'm sitting here hunting a map f frequently i'll just enroll in all the all the competitions for that map or those animals on that map and so if i'm if i'm roaming around with like the 300 magnum in the bow and i got a you know a red deer comp that i gotta shoot it with the muzzleloader then i can just drop down my tent if i'm away from a lodge i can just grab the muzzleloader out and you know take that red deer all right guys i'm back I got some more arrows. I got like five sets of arrows on me now. And went ahead and fast traveled back down here towards the tent. And it is also 9 a.m. now. Changed the time. <coughs> gonna go ahead and do a couple calls here. <coughs> and then we're gonna go ahead and pick up the tent. Looks like we got a call from a red deer cow up here on the hill. She's going to be almost at the summit of the hill. Actually, she probably is because I cannot see her right there. <coughs> Go ahead and call them down the hill here. See if there's a stag with her. Sometimes they may not even call at all either. <laughs> I've noticed that as well. Well, <laughs> I say that and then he just replied back to those calls. But... Sometimes they may not even call. I don't know if that's a bug or not, but normally the smaller tier animals are the ones to reply back a lot sooner, like you just seen him do. The one in the back was more likely to reply than the one here in the front. Now, I've not seen the scenario of where they'll reply at the same time or back to back from each other. Like if they're this close to each other, They'll either like one will reply and the other one won't or they both won't reply to it like I've never seen both of them stop and do the animation for the audio call never never even heard of it happening so I wouldn't worry about that so in this instance you have two stags coming into the call like I said you may get the audio reply from the lesser stag but there's a bigger stag with him that's just because they won't both call back at the same time you can't pick up two audio cues at the same time on the hunter mate. I don't know if anybody's ever went over that or not, but let's go ahead and hopefully, hopefully he stopped right there. Oh, we got another stag coming down the hill. We got another one coming down the hill. Let's see if I can put a better shot on you guys. Okay, so that's stag. This this will make stag four. Wait, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we have four, we have five stags already, and we're just now hitting roughly checkpoint two, which would be right here on this peak bin right there. So we're not even. We're just now halfway done with the river run. And it's not even been, it's not even been 15 minutes. Well, 30, we'll say 30 minutes, because I I restarted the time a little bit. But 204.2, let's see what this guy scores, if it'll load. Alright, that's going to take forever. If that ever happens, just close it out. If it's nothing big, don't worry about it. 
Let's see, 179.8, 130. So to give you an idea, this one was 130, so that one in there was probably like maybe like 155-ish. Any red deer up there in like the 230 plus are going to be your really nice red deer. The 230 plus red deer are really nice. If you actually manage to find like a 260 to 285 red deer, those things are giants. I think I've only shot three or four of them in my entire time playing this game on both of my accounts. Oh my gosh, there's another stag up on the hill, guys. Okay, that's a decent stag. That's what you guys want to see right there. Let's see the score is meant. 190 to 280, boys. That's what we want to see. That is what we want to see in a stag right there. That is definitely what we want to see. And this is why you don't hunt in one area for these guys on this map. Okay? This is why you just dedicate yourself to this river run. I know it's pretty time consuming covering this much ground throughout the hunt but trust me it's going to be worth it anybody who hunts red deer they don't stay in one spot to hunt these things they hunt Val de Bois and they do this river run so this will be stag six the one in front of us and then when we take the big one on the hill that'll be stag seven I'm gonna go ahead and actually mark that where that relatively where that other one is. That one's probably gonna be dead about right here somewhere. The one I did a poor shot on. And plus, they just sound so majestic when you get them that close and they reply back to them. It's just amazing. I can only imagine like actually hearing that in real life that close. Right, we're gonna stand up here because he's probably gonna snap his head when we stand up and there it goes okay that was a bad shot and just because he's gonna spook in that direction I think hopefully hopefully not he doesn't go up the hill okay we're gonna take this other one with the rifle okay that was a long shot for sure that one's gonna die on the other side of the hill now the only reason why I did that normally I wouldn't do that but I was in kind of anticipating for this one here to drop in front of us but I think I only hit a single lung shot on this one in front of us now the only reason why I did that is cuz where we are on the map I'm gonna have to go around that bin anyways so basically down here Right where you see my dot on the hunter's mate, there could be another red deer standing there, just chilling, not even hearing the shot from here. So, and I didn't want this one I just shot with the bow to run up the hill and spook that one even further, so I just took the better choice here and used the rifle on that bigger one. That is why we are carrying the rifle for moments like that. Oh my gosh, wait a minute. Is that another one? There's no way. Is that the one I just shot with the bow? That is the one I just shot with the bow. Okay, well, so we don't have to track him anymore, because we've just shot. We might as well. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All we have to do is look at him and he dies. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Let's get me finish him off and he just tumbles over. Oh, that's great. <laughs> he was like, it is time. Also, another tip, too, if you're not doing, like, a long-range competition, don't hunt these guys elevated. Like, don't don't assume you can run up to the top of this hill and be like, oh, I can see so far, I can see so much. You're hurting yourself in that, st in that standpoint because the higher up you go, render distance actually falls off horizontally and it increases vertically. So, basically, what that means is, is say, horizontally, I can see, just for an example, 365 meters render distance horizontally but if I go up the the increase of incline changes the type of render distance your character is seeing so the higher up you are say you're at the very top of this peak okay and there's a red deer at the very bottom of the river that's a further distance you're gonna be able to shoot that red deer further being at the top of this mountain than you are on flat ground 
that's why you see like a lot of the competitions or like the record breakers they're hunting elevated they're not shooting flat there's you're not you're not there's no way you're going to break some of those records shooting flat in this game okay this is the red deer track and we did get a a lung shot so he definitely didn't go far at all and he is just laying right here he went like probably 60 meters from where I shot him from what a nice red deer. What a very nice red deer. Yep, this is what you guys want right here. This is this is as big as I get almost right here. This guy's probably going to be at least 250, hopefully. 219.3, we got 242 for a score. This is what we were wanting. Nice trophy shot. Now the one thing I wish EW would fix, and that's the clipping issues with the trophy poses. I don't know if you guys seen that one or not, but like the one where like the red deer's heads on the ground, it's like clipping to the ground. I wish I would kind of fix that. All right, so we are approaching checkpoint three here. Which is about right here. And look at that, guys. We got another red deer call. And it's a stag. Look at that. And I think I see him, too. I'm pretty sure I see him down there moving. I do. Another average stag. Fantastic. Fantastic. This is going to be stag number eight of this river run. Okay, here comes the stag. He's cresting over that hill right there. Let's see, we got it 180 to 275. Now, you see the estimate, 180 to 275, and you're saying, man, he could be a 270. No, he's not going to be 270. At most, he'll be like a two, like a 200, maybe like a 215-ish. He's definitely not going to be pushing 230 with that rack. Go ahead and just shoot him real quick. Go ahead and get him out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and mark that too. Well, I mean, it, see, it don't matter if I shoot him with a rifle here or not. Because we're going north. So, like, if you see the screen of the hunter's mate, how it, it cuts out just, like, north of that ruins. That's anything north of that hunter's mate line is gonna, not going to hear the gunshot anyways. So... I know I went over this in probably like an early video, but if you guys need a reminder, whatever you see on the hunter's mate here, this is basically render distance for a gunshot and a call. Is the screen of your hunter's mate. You won't ever hear something outside of that radius. So we got 191, so he just barely missed the 200 mark. Alright guys, I think that's going to be it for today's video. If you guys liked it, feel free to drop a like. If you learned anything, if you didn't like it or didn't learn anything, feel free to dislike it. I love the feedback. It helps the YouTube algorithm a lot. Also, if you haven't subscribed already, I would recommend subscribing. As over 60% of you guys who watch my content aren't subscribed. So if you guys want to be around for when I drop a video and get notified, feel free to do that. It is free. Much appreciated. And you can always unsubscribe later if you feel free to. And yeah, hope you enjoyed today's video, and I will see you guys in the next one.